Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I'm out here in my front garden today because I've got to get some harvesting done. I'm also going to do a garden renovation and I've got plants and seeds that really need to be planted. Now this harvest here is one I've been anticipating for a while now. It's I think the biggest uh, cabbage that I've ever grown. Now I've noticed some of the little green uh, caterpillars are starting to make their way through it so I don't want them to ruin it. So I'm going to call it today and get this beautiful cabbage harvested. Okay I'm just going to give it a good chop down here and we are done. Look at that beautiful cabbage. I'll just pull off some of these leaves. And of course, you know where they're going. The chickens will enjoy them. It's really spent most of its time being very free of any pests, but you can see the little aphids are just starting in on the, the leaves. The chickens will also enjoy those. There's the first of my little green caterpillars. You can see that's what I suspected was hiding in there because you could see all the, the caterpillar poo there. So hopefully it hasn't gone in too far. Beautiful. Just moving on to the second harvest today. I've got this beetroot here that was uh, a volunteer and it's quite long so it's going to be great to pickle and just do sliced beetroot. Let's give that a bit of a twist to hopefully leave most of those extra roots in the ground there. And there we go. I don't remember planting a long variety of beetroot but uh, that's what's happened. Just hiding in here in my wild winter patch I've planted one of my zucchinis, which is actually the one that's doing the best. Now this zucchini plant is the first to actually produce some decent sized zucchini. While they're still small, they'll make a great addition to a stir fry. My tomato plants are just starting to uh, really get going here. But right next to them, I've got the little bean plants that have started to produce a few little beans. So I'm going to keep harvesting those and uh, enjoy them nice and young. Well, there's not many beans here at the moment. It's still a nice addition to a stir fry where you can throw in anything you've got. Now in this garden here, I've got lots of rocket. I find at this time of year, all my lettuce has gone to seed and there's not a lot of lettuce to be had. And the rocket grows really well. And I love just a, a peppery rocket salad. So I'm going to grab a few of those plants today and give my little radish seedlings uh, a little bit more space. That's all my radish seedlings through the middle here. So I'm just going to take some of these rocket plants that are kind of nearby. Now that's enough for a salad for the moment. So I'm going to leave the rest, but I will continue to keep giving those little radishes some space. Just in one of my tomato beds, I've got some kale plants that are looking pretty sensational actually. Hopefully they and the tomatoes will coexist for a while. Today I'm going to grab some of this kale. Now these plants are looking really healthy. It's the third season that I've grown in this space and it's the third season I've done no dig. So I'm hoping over time that there's more organic material being incorporated into the soil and holding more moisture, but also feeding the soil so that they can kind of feed these plants more and uh, make for really healthy food. Now, as I do have some little seedlings in here, tomato 
and basil seedlings. I'm going to slowly be grabbing the leaves from these kale plants to make sure that they've got adequate light. Okay, hopefully they'll get enough sun to, to get going. Once the sun moves through the sky a bit in late morning, these plants will have a lot more light then. Now last on my harvest list today is just to grab a few snow peas. These plants are nearly uh, finishing off and it won't be long until they're all done. So what I'm also going to do today is just put some Ukrainian bean seeds in the soil and uh, they will start to grow just as these plants are finishing off. Some of them are just beyond being nice to eat. They get a bit tough as soon as they start to fatten up a bit. Now with the harvest done, we can get on to the garden renovation. Just along from my failed carrot patch, I've got my old winter garden. As you can see, there's lots of lettuce going to seed. There's some old cauliflower plants and some that are yet to harvest. So I'm going to be leaving those in the ground. I've got radicchio and various weeds. Some of the weeds indicate that uh, there might be a compaction issue right here and that's the cape weed. So given that that's growing, I am going to clear these plants and then use my broad fork just to um, aerate the soil a little bit and break up any compaction layer before adding on some compost. Now when I'm using the sickle, I try not to get into the, the soil so that I'm not disturbing worms, but for some things it's just really hard to get it out without some soil disturbance, but um, you just got to try your best really. So you can kind of just scrape it off at ground level like that, and there's very little soil disturbance there. Now this looks like a little broccoli plant, which I might just leave. So I'll cut carefully around that. And there's another little one over the back there too. So I might let them do their thing. By leaving roots in the ground for your cauliflower and broccoli plants, you often get these little side shoots that turn into small cauliflower or broccoli. Now it's pretty tiny, but if you've got a few coming along, that can be enough just to add, again, to one of your stir fries. And they kind of just shoot from the base, from where you've chopped off the main plant. You could add the centre flower and also the leaves. Now right now I'm feeling really bad because of these bees, because this is a food source for them, but but I know that I've left the uh, winter garden with plenty of flowers so that, um, you know, it keeps them happy. Now to get this massive cape weed plant out. Oh, what are you? Like a current. Now this here actually looks like it could be a red currant seedling. I did have a red currant fruiting, so maybe the birds have eaten that and at some stage spread the seeds around. I'm going to pop that up and just put it in my nursery and just observe it and confirm it is a currant plant before putting it somewhere else. All right, I'll go and get that potted up. This bucket did have some worm castings in it, so I've just added some water. So it should add a bit of fertility to this little plant as well. 
Just hold it in until the bubbles stop and we should be well hydrated. I'll just add that to my little nursery and keep an eye on it until I know it's a red currant and then I'll put it out in my swale somewhere. Quite a bit of stuff here. I'm not building a compost at the moment, so this will all go to the chickens and they will love it. G'day matey. There you go. Now that's all I'm going to clear for the moment. What I will do is grab out my broad fork and just aerate this uh, ground a little bit and then add on my compost. You can see the soil is right here with not the layer that you need on top. So we're going to put on quite a bit. Just before getting onto it with the broad fork, I'm just going to rake off some of this wood chip that's on the surface. With the broad fork, I do create some holes in the soil surface and I don't want any of this material to, to fall in. You don't want to add big thick wood chips into the soil because it uh, takes nitrogen away from the growing plants. The wood chip's best sitting on top. Now I'm just going to move along on contour with this broad fork. And you can see that ground's fairly solid. It's taking a bit to work this in. When the soil is nice and loose, this should just go in no problem. So it just gently lifts it without turning it. The worms don't particularly like this, but in the long run, it will be helpful. Now I won't have to keep doing this. It's in just the soil improvement stage. Um, with a bit of compost and a bit more soil life, the soil should start to uh, deepen. Now I have been topping up my garden beds with mushroom compost, but at the moment I've got my own ready, so I'm just going to use that. This was from a different bin and it's not very broken down, but this pile here seems to be quite good, so it uh, should help this garden heaps. If there's lots of worms in your compost, it's a pretty good indication you've got good life in there. Worms actually eat all the bacteria in the soil. Well, that's my garden bed prepared. I'm going to come back a little bit later to do the planting. It's the middle of the day and it's really warmed up. So I'm going to do it in the cool of the evening. Tomorrow's going to be a bit more overcast and a bit friendlier for these young plants that I'm about to put in. So they should get a good start. Well, it's a bit later on in the day and it's certainly cooled down a bit and I'm happy to be able to get these plants that I've got into the ground. 
I've been to the nursery and I've bought some chilies and some capsicums and some eggplants because the plants that I started from seed really have failed. I've got a few left that are struggling to get going because of all the cold weather we've had, but the birds have been in and they've been digging them up. Because the weather was so poor and the roots really didn't start growing, it was easy for the birds to dig them up. And before I knew it, uh, they were, the roots were out and dried and the plant was gone. So I'm just gonna do a cheat and buy some plants so I've got a lovely full garden. I'm thinking it's birds eating my plants. I don't think blue tongue lizards eat them. I'm not sure. This guy's been around a bit actually. It stirs up my two puppies. And it gives me a fright every time I see him because I think it of a snake. But um, he's a good guy in the garden. I think they eat snails and slugs. So hopefully that's the case and uh, he'll rid the garden of those. This was the little garden that I planted my little plants into. Now I still have some surviving, the ones that I've had the little tubes over. And they're finally getting some sort of darker green happening on them, so they might be growing soon. I've got a couple of eggplants that have survived and a few of these chilli plants, or they might be capsicums, I'm not too sure. But what I'm thinking of doing, a lot of them I put in double seeds and the idea of planting both of them, I was just going to snip off the one that looked the healthiest. But given that... Um, it's hard to buy chilli plants in the store that's just a sort of a small size in quantity so I think I might try and just split these and spread them out at a later date when I've got some more structures to help protect from the birds. Down the other end this is the healthiest of my plants that I've planted it's a little eggplant so that one should really start to take off we've got some warm weather now Hopefully it won't turn cold again and um, that should help these plants start off. So let's have a look at the plants that I managed to get. I was expecting to buy chilies like these eggplants with quite a few um, smaller type in a container but all the chilies were gone. I suppose halfway through December is just too late to be getting them. But I did get some um, more established plants which should uh, stand up to those birds a little bit better I would suspect. So I've got four capsicums, I've got some cayenne pepper, some jalapeno, a hot Hungarian yellow and then I got three of these really quite large plants as well which are uh, three different varieties and range from mild to quite hot. I do want to be making some hot sauces and um, some chilli powder and some just flaked chilies as well. So I wanted a variety of chilies this season. I've also grabbed just some basil here. The basil that's in my tomato bed is starting to go quite well but most of the basil that I planted out into this garden where the birds have got to it are gone. I've just spread out the chilli and pepper plants and then I might just add in the eggplants sort of in the middle amongst those and then scatter the basil around a bit too. Some areas of the compost are a bit deeper than others, so I am having to dig a little bit to get these in. Six little eggplants in here, which I'm just going to spread evenly around. And with this basil mix, I'm just going to spread it around the, the outer edge. I 
hopefully I can pry them apart easily. Ooh, I don't know how that one will go. I'll just leave those together. my garden planted. I am going to try and get some cover onto it. A lot of these larger plants should be able to withstand a little bit of bird pressure and hopefully start to get some roots established. Now the only other thing that I was hoping to get done today was get some Ukrainian bean seeds in the ground. I have various beans growing around the place, some with my tomatoes and there's some more growing down near my greenhouse. Now I've planted those all at different times, so hopefully it'll extend the harvest. And what I'm gonna do with these is just plant them on this side of this trellis at the moment. So it'll take a little while for these to grow, and by that time, uh, my theory is the snow peas will have finished. And so I'll be able to remove those and have the bean plants growing up already. Then once they're going, I will plant on the other side as well. Um, they're really nice eating um, fresh bean and they're, they're quite nice as a dried bean as well. So I don't mind having lots of these growing. So just having a look in here, I'm just going to kind of sneak it in in various spots in here. So it's going to be hard to film, but that's basically what I'm going to do is just dig little holes up and down this trellis and pop in a few bean seeds, cover them over and let them grow. Now what I discovered with burying those little seeds is that this garden too doesn't have a lot of organic material on it so I'll be adding a heap more compost on top of this little garden bed very soon as soon as I've cleared out some of these pea plants. Well, it feels good to have my garden bed all renovated and with some new plants in. It does feel a little bit like cheating, but I'm not going to be too hard on myself. I'm still learning to grow from seed and grow decent plants. And this year was a bit of a fail in terms of the, the pepper plants, but my tomatoes are going great, so I won't be too hard on myself. Hopefully I'll get some cover over the top of this before the birds do any damage and hopefully that will help get them established. But we've got some warm weather coming, something these plants really love. So no excuses, they'll have to grow well.